Hello, so welcome to this video about OpenStack Nova. I'm John Garbutt, I'm the current Nova PTL, I'm the PTL for the Liberty release. Um, so we're going to start by talking about what's happened in Kilo. Are you okay to advance the slide for me there? Thanks. So the OpenStack Nova project uh, is sometimes called the Compute Project, and it's focused on providing compute resources to users. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into that right now. There's some great presentations about exactly what Nova is and how it works. What I'm going to just give some context on is what happened in our last release, the Kilo release. So something new we did in Kilo was to sit down at the summit um, with all the developers, all the different stakeholders, lots of folks, and get together and work out now, what are the key things that are a priority for um, Nova over the Kilo release? And out of that, um, the sort of common themes that were coming out is we know Nova's got quite big. We know that some of the components are starting to get too tightly coupled, um, mostly due to the fact that we've got quite loose interfaces within the components. And there's a lot of work going on to fix that. Um, and so we decided to come up with this list of like key priorities, most of which are basically different parts in this architectural evolution of Nova as we're moving forward. A lot of it comes down to creating lots of problems for our users. Um, so there's some bugs that are due to the way things are put together. Uh, and also there's a lot of technical debt slowing down development, making it harder to get features out and all that kind of thing. So we decided to focus on this architectural evolution. Some parts of that uh, include like work on improving the Nova schedule interface. We've got this long, long standing feature request that we need to be able to uh, schedule things between projects. So if your Cinder volumes are close to your Nova virtual machines or compute instances, we need to be able to deal with that. So a lot of the work is building up to getting to that position. Another big thing that we're working on right now is um, the next version of Cells, Cells v2. The Cells um, system was originally designed to help scale out Nova, but it's actually turned out to be more useful, in fact, for um, when you've got a deployment, being able to expand the deployment in a nicely controlled fashion. Uh, and the original version of Cells is very off on one side in Nova, and we're trying to work hard to make sure that Cells is a mainstream component of Nova that everyone uses by default. So there's an awful lot of work going on behind the scenes to make all that happen. And those, those are the sort of key parts that got kicked off in Kilo. Now another priority for Nova in Kilo is the API v2.1. We need to find a way in which we can evolve our API that is really makes the API good and discoverable for our users. Um, but also it's easier for the developers to evolve um, and to stop there being a friction between these two things. And after an awful lot of work, an awful lot of hard work, we've come up with this idea of microversions and v2.1. From a user perspective, the key thing is, is that we're having a way to move forward in a way that you can detect if the system has a new API. You can also isolate yourself from changes by requesting a specific version. So if you can request that specific version, you keep on a stable version um, while the system evolves. And this is happening with people deploying from trunk, people deploying stable releases and all these different things, but we still want the users to be able to discover exactly what the API is. So there's an awful lot of detailed work there. Probably the key takeaway is the plan is to not break anything. So your existing API requests to v2 will be maintained and it'll work just like they are today. And as you request specific new versions, you'll get specific new functionality as those things turn on. And in Kilo, it was the first release of this. So this is now ready for people to start using. Another thing that came out of the priority that we agreed is an awful lot of work on improving our upgrade. Deployers and users of OpenStack Nova have been asking for some time um, for a lot of work on upgrade. And this work has been many years in the making. There's a nice blog here describing basically how you can deploy 
um, OpenStack Nova and see the, uh, so you start with the uh, Juno version. You've got that all working. And there's a way to have very minimal downtime when you're moving to the Kilo version. Now there's still a slight amount of API downtime with the current approach, but as you'll see, we're sort of building on where we're getting to, but we've got to a, a very nice smooth upgrade process. There's all the existing things that we have done for some time now in Nova with upgrades. We ensure that we don't pull features away without warning people as deprecation windows. We always try and find some smooth transition to the new thing, if there's a new thing replacing an old thing. But all that existing work still happening. Um, but try to make the upgrade as smooth as possible. There were loads of other things going on in Kilo. Uh, the, best, the best thing is to reach out um, and find out what's happening. And you can look in Launchpad to see the blueprints and the bugs that were particularly fixed. Um, and there's going to be some more in-depth presentation on the specifics of each of those features, but this is kind of just an overall flavor of what's happening in Kilo. Excellent, so we'll move on to the slide that's now going to be talking about um, the plans we have for the current release, uh, Liberty. The first thing here is I'll refer to the presentation that Thierry did on the release management. Um, we're now focusing much more on reporting than prediction. As such, I'm kind of just saying these are the, these are the plans we have. Um, it's quite hard to actually predict exactly when things will land. But right now, these are the kind of things that we have in flight. Um, for the Liberty release. So the first piece is uh, we went through the process of prioritization again, and, and most of the key things that came out of that were the architectural evolution that we're currently working on. The first part of that is uh, we've now got V2.1 released, but now we need to take the next steps. The first part is that we actually need um, to get rid of the old code. We currently have parallel implementations, so we need to make sure that the V2 support is as good as we can possibly make it and start to get adoption of that V2 support in production environments so that we can uh, deprecate the old V2 code so that we have a single code base serving both the V2 API, the V1.1 API, which is just an alias, and the V2.1 API. Um, right now, we're at the case where uh, the Tempest tests work on uh, for both V2 and uh, V2.1 requests. It's the same tests against both code bases, so we know that it's good to that level. We're just trying to get it to the, the next level where we're talking about relaxing validation appropriately and all that kind of thing. There's a key um, a key part of this effort is to make sure that we go back and get the docs to a good position so it's nice and usable. We're working hard to get Python Nova client to support v2.1 well, so that that's, we've got the good foundations to build on as we add features into the API. Uh, lots of the focus um, you'll see going forward with the API is to ensure, is to ensure that you have a good interoperable API. The dev core work is starting to focus the community's minds on exactly where we have issues. One of the first things we're doing with the v2.1 API is to try and drop this idea of extensions. So the API is the full API. This then has the knock-on effect that the only way you can turn off bits of the API are through policy changes. So we're looking at how we configure policy within the API so we get that um, working well and really usable and will be good across upgrades. So there's a good bit of rework happening there. The next sort of like key part that we're doing during Liberty is more work on upgrades. Uh, we want to get to that zero downtime upgrade. Now just to step back for a moment, we, when we upgrade Nova, there is no VM downtime, there's no VM connectivity downtime. We're talking about the control plane here, so the, the, the API availability and um, the ability for the API to serve the request that it's given. So the in the Kilo release, we were able to do, uh, for the first time, we were able to do the database migrations um, completely online. So in the past, you had to wait an awful long time to um, 
uh, to be able to, so in certain cases where you have a big database, you have to wait a long time for the migration. So that was a key pain point. Um, with the Kila release, we've moved to ensure that all data migrations, we're moving data from one row to another, one table to another, they all happen online. Um, so there's no need to wait for that to happen. Uh, the, the flavor migration is the first example of that. And in the, uh, the, uh, in the Liberty release, we're planning to take it a step further to make sure that all schema migrations are like strictly in an expand and contract phase. So we've um, recently merged an experimental version of this where we can split the DB migration into the bit that you do before you upgrade the services and the bit you do after everything's running the new code. Um, it ha so happens that when moving to Juno to Kilo, we'd only done expansions. So that's how we were able to do the online migration from uh, Juno to Kilo. But Liberty, we're trying to take that a step further. Cell V2 um, is progressing. The plan for Liberty is to try and get to the point where, by default, all deployments are actually using Cell V2. Uh, the slight caveat to that is that you can only have a single um, Cell V2 cell right now. Uh, the plan is that in the M release, we'll look at having multiple cells and being able to convert cells V1 users to cells V2 and all those kind of slightly more complex issues we're, waiting, uh, we're leaving for M. That's the plan for Liberty is to get everyone using cells V2. It's a good separation between the, the API and the compute layer. Uh, generally, lots of this work is, as I was saying before, is all focusing on making sure that we we work hard at like fixing fundamental issues that are creating bugs and um, ensuring that we increase the development velocity and we're able to keep delivering great features for our users. There's so much more that's currently in review and so much more that's currently under planning. Um, there's some links here to give like some a, a flavor of what's currently being proposed and planned for the, the Liberty release, but hopefully we are a lot more on that um, once we have some more concrete things to talk about. So now I'm going to move on to my next slide, which is about uh, uh, scaling out the Nova community. We're always evolving as a, Nova, as a community. The whole OpenStack community is always evolving. But during the Liberty timeframe, we're trying to have a much more focused effort looking at what we're doing and how we operate as a community and how we can improve um, to, to scale out what we're doing. Having had lots of conversations with different people on all sides of the story, the, the key thing we're trying to work on right now is better communication. So we're trying to talk about writing down what our plans are and probably much more importantly, make a, a really big effort uh, uh, describing why we're doing what we're doing. We want it to be really easy for people to engage with debates on our design, on our development process, on everything. And part of that is to ensure that we're clear about the, the history behind what we're doing and why it is so that we can make sure that people can uh, meet the ground running when they're joining the bait, debates. Part of this, like following on with this, um, is to make sure that we are really approachable and we make an effort to reach out. So we're doing some key um, mentoring and some onboarding work to make sure that it's easy for newcomers to understand where to get started, what we're doing, where we need help. Um, when we looked at the priorities for Liberty, we actually have an extra list this time for Liberty saying, hey, these are things that are really important to Nova. We just don't have people working on these right now, but we'd love to have people working on them. So that's a great place to see, like, where can I help in Nova? There's a, a great list of things for people to step up. And through the, the mentoring program, we're trying to make sure that we have people available to actually talk to people about these and, and get things moving forward. Uh, I'm hoping to eventually have like a, like a mentoring czar and a, a team that's able to be specific people to reach out to. Um, right now, it's a case of emailing, my, emailing myself or asking on the mailing list, and we'll get people to 
to go and help and discuss things with you. But we're really trying to bootstrap that effort. Part of that is we need to be expanding the Nova Core review team. So the Nova Core team are specifically looking out for uh, people doing great reviews and encouraging them um, to do more and to work with them uh, to the point where we can get them added onto Nova Core and we can get that team expanding again. So we need to set a context to the work that's happening in Nova. One of the key friction points that we have is that Nova's got to such a large size, it's a big project, it's hard to understand all the areas. We want to make sure that doesn't get any worse. What we're doing to try and help that is we're trying to be very specific about what the project scope of Nova is. Um, I've linked to a document on the slide deck that we're trying to that we're starting to sort of describe exactly what the scope of Nova is. This is not Nova trying to be difficult, it's Nova trying to make sure that the right thing happens for the open OpenStack ecosystem. In the early days we split out Nova volume because it was clear there was a community of people that cared about volume drivers that should go and live by themselves. And the Cinder project was born. It's a great example of where Nova saying, no, we're not the right project to do this. There's a distinct community voice that needs to have its own project and go and run with this thing. Um, that worked well. Another example is Heat. People wanted to add orchestration APIs to Nova because Nova was doing the compute kind of things. But Heat's actually been in a much better position to go and run, um, run with the idea and build up a great ecosystem around that. Um, without having to be part of this mass uh, Nova community. They're doing a great job on that. So we're looking for more opportunities to split things out, um, but we're still looking for innovation on what we're doing. At the core of what we're doing is we've got to get better at it. Uh, so, for example, there's lots of innovation happening around the schedule and different ideas there. That's great stuff. Um, the schedule being an example of a component we may want to pull out in the future if we can get it get some solid interfaces around it so that it can live by itself as an independent project. But that's the kind of scope there. We're trying to make sure that we have a clear scope for Nova so that when people come with their ideas, they can see um, if, that, if it fits with the Nova scope. So looking at what like Nova is concentrating on right now, we need to be clear about what our mission is, what our values are, you know, the current goals that we have. Uh, just to start that conversation, um, right now it's sort of two clear things are emerging. Firstly, the Nova API is great when it's a great platform for interoperability. It's great when we have a, a solid ecosystem that builds up around that. And that's happening. We need to support that and encourage it and improve it. An example is when you come to add something that's a very specific feature, um, we need to look at a way in which we can implement that feature so it's more applicable between all the different drivers and all different use cases so that that is something that could be adopted by the full ecosystem rather than being an oddball thing on the side that no one can use. So I think that's best for the people adding the features because the features they add will be, you, be able to use by a much wider audience. Um, and it's the the right way we think to go forward. The other thing that was emerging from those discussions is we have a lot of users. Users are relying on Nova to keep working and keep working well for what they're doing. So part of that, it's all around ensuring that you have good upgrade, which we were talking about a lot. Um, but equally, you've got to be able to scale out that deployment as the, the needs of those users grow. And you've got to make sure, it, like with all these changes, all these different things that are happening, we still want the stability of the system still needs to work. We're and when we're looking at upgrade, we're actually looking at people deploying from any point on the, the master branch. So we have people uh, deploying like production clouds from uh, taking a point on the master branch and then taking that, doing some stabilization and deploying that, and that's really useful for getting needing and bleeding end features and also get all the latest bug fixes. It's doing a great job at that. 
there's also all the people doing um, who are taking uh, releases that have stable branches so that they can get uh, non-impacting bug fixes that way. But our, our hope with all the live upgrade work is that you can, like, from commit to commit and release to release, you get this great sort of live upgrade path. The other part of that is that there's lots of conversations right now about how we change the um, the version numbering. The more observant of you will see on the slide on Liberty, it's called the version um, 12 release rather than the 2015.1. It's part of the project's moving towards a more um, SEMVR-like uh, versioning scheme. But what I wanted to say was that uh, we're still in Novo, to, in order to have all this upgrade, um, the restriction is is that you, in order to upgrade um, from J to L, you have to have first upgrade to K, uh, and that allows us to have um, all the backwards compatibility code to allow the smooth upgrade. Um, for, we can have all that code in the code base, but we know that we can get rid of it in a reasonable time frame. So that's why we're doing that, that sort of upgrade requirement. So given all the version changes, um, that's a debate that's worth getting into right now with how upgrade works. Anyway, that's a kind of overview on some of the things we're doing with the scaling with the Nova community. The key thing we're trying to do is go back and describe why we're doing um, what we're up to and making sure that we describe what we're up to well. So the next slide is actually on the uh, where we're going next. What are the possible future priorities? The first thing I wanted to mention is some work on uh, what I've been calling feature classification. This is an evolution of our existing hypervisor support matrix and uh, compute driver classification system. For those not aware of that, the basic idea is we want to be very clear to our users what uh, combinations work well, what features are available in which combinations, and overall give clarity on what the upstream uh, community are actually testing and what we know works in each release and each commit to each commit. This is going to help us focus on where we have like feature gaps between the different combinations where bits of the code are perhaps not being as tested as well as they should be or getting um, forgotten and trying to get attention for those. Um, it's a, basically, it's a, it's a, a, we're trying to reinvigorate the effort that was started with the compute driver classification um, uh, uh, probably a little over two years ago and try and re-kick that effort so that we can get going on that. In the Liberty release, we're working to make sure that we have all the fundam fundamentals so we can evolve the V2.1 API in place. When we get beyond getting, the, once we've got that sorted and that's all in place, we really want to look at evolving the API um, in terms of its interoperability. Like one of the key areas we know we have a weakness is that the discoverability of features that are triggered by uh, image metadata and flavor retrospects and is not great. We need a better mechanism to model that. Uh, there's still, from a DEF core point of view, there's lots of questions about how uh, you interact with OpenStack and networking and the compute APIs and networking. We need to go back and answer some of those fundamental issues in the light of everything that's happening with Nova Network. Something you've probably picked up here is that a lot of the work is actually pulling out um, what I like to call like uh, bug themes. So there's when we're talking to our users and seeing the bugs that are coming in, often there's these themes that emerge where you can see an area of code that needs work. And we're making sure to uh, identify those and try and get people to work on those. Some of the big things that are coming up right now are quotas. Uh, so we have a we have a plan that we're working on for quotas. We need to get some more effort behind that. Uh, another part of the story is looking at all the cross-project interactions. Um, so we're looking carefully at how we integrate with Cinder, how we integrate with 
um, Neutron's new uh, sort of driver system and how and what that means for Nova. So we're looking at all these integration pieces where it's known to be uh, a place where things can fall between the cracks when there's when things go wrong. So making sure that that's solid and we have good ways of recovering from the errors. And we understand what's going on. So it's a case of doubling down on those efforts and making sure that we have the best interfaces we can between our projects and looking at how to evolve that. There's a big lot of work there. We're trying to kick that off. Um, there's some work to adopt the Brick library that we hope to get into Liberty. Um, Brick being a, a new interface for connecting certain things to Cinder. Um, and we hope to see some great stuff moving forward on that. Going back to these bug themes, one of the big ones that I wanted to pull out by itself on its own little bullet point here is there's a lot of work uh, in thinking behind how do we get from where we are today to like the next level of reliability and stability, ensuring that the API is uh, very clear at the error reporting and we have a good strategy across the whole of the Nova code base. The sort of code name that's been given for this in the past is the tasks effort. Um, right now we're sort of trying to solidify our ideas on this so that we can get more folks to come and help um, with sorting this out. But it's exciting that we're starting to get some traction on where we'll go forward with this. Uh, and this is another thing that's coming out of now we have a good way of evolving the API. How do we move forward in terms of uh, improving the sort of the, f the stability feel of the API when you're interacting with it. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening. Um, I hope that gives you a good idea of what's happening uh, in the Liberty release, what's happened in Kilo and where we're looking for the future. If you want to reach out to me, um, feel free. I'm on IRC during uh, UK working hours. I'm, my IRC handles John the Tuba Guy. Uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter, um, at John the Tuba Guy. Um, feel free to drop me a mail at my usual email address. But thank you very much for your time. I hope that was useful.